This is SLA TV, television for the beef cattle industry. Show the world that you ranch the superior way with apparel, hats, and other merchandise from the Superior Online Store. Whether you're looking for a gift or something for yourself, the only place to find official Superior Livestock branded apparel is at SuperiorLivestockStore.com. The online store features name brands such as Port Authority, Click, and Dry Duck. Hats, jackets, shirts, vests, gloves, coolers, and much more are just a click away. Order today. Superior Livestock Auction isn't just a name, it's an expectation. Because our customers expect us to deliver superior results. Uh, Superior has been great to work with. It's really picked up our footprint in America. Here we're selling bulls all over that we never would have. Having the assistance of Superior Auction, it's definitely been an addition to our bottom line. At Superior, our expectation is to increase your bottom line. Call or click to find out more. Established in 1987, Superior Livestock Auction is now the largest cattle marketing network in North America. Weekly video auctions called by world champion auctioneers, along with Superior's online click-to-bid, puts thousands of qualified buyers in front of your production or commercial cattle. My grandfather used to put them on a stock car and go to Sioux City, Iowa. Now we have it worldwide web. You can watch it on the internet or TV. That slings our loop out a whole lot further than just uh, Texas. Our cattle get a little further away than just Central Oregon or this Northern California country. Our customers have a way to purchase bulls without having to physically be at the sale. They open up a whole new world of buyers that can look at your cattle. That network of people is so huge that creates a perfect venue. Different people buying them that got competitive deals, kind of tough to beat. They're seen by probably pretty much every person buying cattle in the U.S. They pretty much establish the price. Seems like Superior is always kind of the trendsetter. Year after year, producers across the nation trust their bottom line to Superior Livestock Auction. We were very skeptical to begin with, but it's worked out great for us. They have done such an extraordinary job in helping us market our program throughout the United States. No matter the location of your operation, Superior Livestock Auction can move your cattle for top dollar. To go through Superior, we were able to go back east with the cattle, where before we didn't have that option. We are several hundred thousand dollars ahead of where we would be if we didn't have Superior. That's why we've been doing it for 20 years. We've had really good experience with them, I guess, after 28 years. If we hadn't, we wouldn't be with them. We're building relationships you can build your business on. Call or go online to learn more about marketing your cattle the Superior way. The Superior Country Page is the leading online marketplace for buying and selling load lots of calves, feeders, and breeding stock. The Country Page is an efficient, easy to use, and low cost solution for selling cattle. You set the price and move at your pace with flexible delivery options. The Country Page matches the best buyers to the best sellers at the best price for both parties. Call or log on today to find out more about the Superior Country Page. Superior VAC protocols and value-added programs build confidence with cattle buyers. Superior's vaccination protocols are the benchmark for America's beef industry. Those along with Superior Progressive Genetics, third-party verified Superior Source and Age, Verified Natural, NHTC, GAP, Beef Care, and other Superior value-added programs give buyers the confidence to pay premiums for quality load lock cattle you sell on Superior. Call or go online to find out more. Do you have a video that should be on SLA TV? Individuals and organizations are invited to share their videos with SLA TV. Let us know about your video by sending an email to sharemyvideo at sla-tv.com. This ranch here was my wife's family's ranch. They homesteaded here in 1881. I think we're the fourth generation. My boys are going to be the fifth. And uh, we've combined it with my, my family's place in Summit County, Utah. And so we run both of them in conjunction. And same thing with that. We're fourth generation down there. Same thing.
We're strictly cow-calf now. We used to have a dairy, but we closed it down. Our genetics, traditionally, the, the cattle in this country was mainly Hereford-type cows influence. Early 80s, we started putting the black Angus into these cattle, and predominantly now, most of these herds are all black around here. Have put a little bit of Simital, Sim Angus in them, but for the most part, we're just straight black Angus. Here in this Curlew Valley, we're, we're in the desert, so we're pretty short of rainfall here. And so this is kind of an abnormal year here that you would see with our rainfall. We'll never, we'll never cuss the rain if we get it here. We spend six months out of the year wintering on the Utah side, six months summering in the Idaho side, and we use a deferred grazing and a rest rotation grazing to order to stockpile our feed in order to secure enough feed for our grazing years. And so very few years that we have to feed hay, but, but we do have to keep a hay supply on hand in case those winters have that come about that we have to pull those cows off. We have a grazing association originally started out as the Curlew Horse and Cattle Association and that pertained it had BLM and Forest Service permittees. In about the early 90s, the BLM broke out of that, so that is strictly run under the Forest Service. Uh, Grasslands Grazing is that association, but the BLM is still running out there, and we run that in conjunction. And so all the cow-calf men in this valley, we're, we're all members of that asso original association. We're separate operations, but we run together. Uh, our bulls are selected by us. Uh, we have a bull judging committee, so we, we use uh, the latest genetics that we can buy, purebred bulls, black Angus, and uh, therefore we're getting a consistent calf that my neighbor's calf is peas in the pod with mine because there, we run together, we, we trail these cattle year round. Uh, very few of our trucks, uh, cows hit a truck. And uh, the only thing is different is there's just a different brand on that calf. How we make that work is that we set up a system that the first year out, the first neighbor will bring his calves into the scales, he, he weighs, and then the second one. Then the following year, we, we have that on a rotating schedule. So the guy that was second last year will be first this year. And so we keep that. So everybody's calves get weighed evenly. Uh, it's the fairest thing we found that works for everybody on this pool. So nobody monopolizes on the pool. In pooling these cattle, it makes it so the little guy that doesn't have a truckload can get a load together. Be it your son or somebody starting with this, uh, we can have a producer with only 60 head of cows or a guy that's got 400 head of cows. It allows everybody to be able to capitalize on those top prices. We bid these calves in. We know what our truckloads are going to be. Between our superior rep and us, we can bring these calves usually within just a few pounds of our targeted weight. You, you really don't need to be a big producer to sell cattle on Superior. Oh, very nice. I don't think Chad knows that I wasn't. Russell is a longtime customer of Superior Rep Kelly Kunstler. Numbers always sell well. Guys get a lot of consistency out of numbers. But if you don't have a full load and your neighbor and you can put a load together, I can come by and look at them, see if they match up, tell you. I mean, and then, then you can get a forward contract and all the benefits we've talked about superior. You're not hauling them to a sale barn in October, waiting for eight, 10, 12 hours for them to sell, standing there, shrinking the whole time. Health isn't good, stress on the animals is worse. <coughs> Why superior livestock? Number one, the money's good. Don't have to haul them anywhere. We pick them up. Buyer sends the trucks. We pick them up there. And I'm at every delivery, or I have a 
couple guys that work for me that'll be there if I can't be, but I try to be to every delivery. My son helps me quite a bit. He, he'll deliver them. We're there. We look the cattle over when they go on. We write the check that day. They, they can take it to the bank that day. There's no wait time. There's no hold time, and, and it's good to go. I've been selling with Superior since uh, my father had started in Summit County since the second year they were in business. Started in a calf pool down there. And then we come up here and become part of this operation and we brought Superior into the valley in the early 90s. And the great thing about what Superior is and these ranches that we run in common with we're able to market these calves instead of selling just one weight calf. We can market our lightweights and our heavyweights, and we co-mingle those loads together in order for us to be able to ship all our calves and get us a higher premium for, for our weights on those truckloads. In the mid-90s, Superior set the standard for calf vaccinations and value-added programs. Today, cattle buyers will discount animals that are not included within a VAC program. And industry-leading value-added programs such as Superior Source and Age Verified, NHTC, and others are proven to add premiums on sale day. We're on the VAC 45 program where we wean and precondition and, and it allows us to get our cattle in, get the ball out of them. And, and uh, have a preconditioned calf where that calf can go anywhere here in the United States. Along with excellent genetics and ranch management, VAC and value-added programs are the best way to increase the bottom line of your cow-calf operation. And Superior Livestock knows that producers like Russell might only get one paycheck a year. Superior is the largest cattle marketing network in North America and they have the proven reputation to get you the highest possible price for your cattle year after year. You watch as the summer starts, everybody has their eyes on our first big summer sale. What's the market? Anytime we have a big sale throughout the summer, everybody's watching, and I hear a lot of country buyers say, well, let's see what the cattle do on Superior, then I'll have a better idea of what they're worth. Why wouldn't you want to do all you could? to make your bottom line bigger. And selling with superior livestock on these video auctions, to me, is a no-brainer. I mean, you're getting your forward contract when you want to sell them, not when someone dictates to you. And your money's good, buyers look at them. There's a buyer for every set of cattle out there. Some cattle will bring more money than others, but there is literally a buyer for every type and kind of animal that we put on superior. For so many cow-calf operations located off the beaten path, Superior opens the door to a nationwide base of over 8,000 active buyers. Superior gives buyers access to a steady supply of quality load lot cattle. And competitive bidding brings top dollar for sellers. It's a win-win for everyone. You know, the country buyers in this area, they left in the early 90s. Our only other avenue was commission houses, and they were far and few between. It's, it's enabled us to sell our calves right here off the farm. Our reps been able to market our cattle from California clean back into Kansas. And, uh, we have repeat buyers. We've had one repeat buyer that bought 18, 19 years. But for us, Superior, it's the only way to go. Foreman and Country Living. This is SLA TV. Superior Livestock Auction welcomes you to Oklahoma City for our annual Bell Ringer Auction. Join us January 18th through the 20th at the Embassy Suites Northwest, held in conjunction with our rep training and award ceremony on the 17th. The Bell Ringer is a great opportunity to market your cattle to our nationwide buyer base. Reach out to your Superior rep to consign by January 2nd. Log on SuperiorLivestock.com or call 800-422-2117.
The stars shine brighter when you're out on the range. You're watching SLA TV. Hi, I'm Lee Leachman, and we're here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, I've got a group of ranchers here from Colorado and Wyoming, and we're going to be talking about what drives profitability in the cow-calf sector. If we think about the cattle industry over the last 50 years and the changes we've seen in the industry genetically, the seed stock industry has largely pursued more growth and more carcass traits. We've made cattle substantially bigger. We've made them grow faster. But I'm not really sure we've made them more profitable for the cow-calf sector. And so we really have to think about how this selection for growth is impacting those cows and, and we really need to think about the fact that the trends within the breeds and within the breeders is to select for more and more growth and more and more carcass. And so I think uh, it could present some problems. And the, the question that I like to ask ranchers and that we're really going to discuss here today is if we continue to select for more growth rate and more carcass traits, is that really going to improve the profitability of a commercial cow herd? And so we've got uh, six guys here that are, are friends of ours and customers of ours from here in northern Colorado and Wyoming. And uh, we just have asked them to come in today and, and talk with us about what the drivers are in their cow herds and what they see as being important going forward. So thank you guys for coming today. And uh, we'll just maybe start out with uh, the, the key kind of question, which is, uh, you know, what is the most important thing to profitability in your cow-calf operation selling calves at weaning time? Look, I, I think to start with, we got to figure out a way to keep, keep tabs on our input costs. Because if, if we don't control that, we don't control necessarily what the out, the out cost is going to be. So profitability starts with making sure we have cows that don't cost us too much. How we control cost. I think a live calf is very important in, in our situation. We, we need calves that can get up and go. Cows don't have trouble with them. And I think that's super important in our program. I think with my experience, the uh, uh, feed costs and uh, labor are two of the biggest costs on a ranch. And so the systems you have in place dictate uh, those costs and you can really improve them by desi designing systems that uh, have that in mind. Don't require extra labor or extra feed, right? You know, obviously one of the drivers is how much output you have, right? We, we didn't, we kind of skipped over that one, but it's obviously growth rate and the value of that calf. We talked about cow cost and how much does that cow eat? Not something we've been able to measure historically, but now, now we can, and that's an interesting thing to look at. And then the reproduction stuff, which we hit on, you know, does that calf, because I, when I think of reproduction, I think it's like, unless the calf's alive at weaning, there really wasn't reproduction because there wasn't a live calf event, right? We got to get that calf all the way to sale. So the calving ease, the breeding at 15 months, the breeding back early of the cow and the survival of that calf all make a big difference. And then longevity. Um, and, and maybe somebody wants to speak to the longevity effect. I know, Wayne, when you guys are uh, doing your math, the, the, the depreciation and the value of that cow comes into play on your cost structure. Oh, absolutely. And so, uh, and time of calving, the, uh, whether you've got some crossbreeding going on in your herd, all those kind of things uh, add into the longevity. And you just think about it, if you've got to keep more heifers back because you're turning your cow herd over, you've got less income, doesn't make much difference what they weigh because if you don't have, if you have to keep them back to save them over, can't, uh, sell, them. can't sell them. I think no matter where I go in the world, what we want to do on each of those areas is the same. We, we'd like to increase output if we could make sure we don't lose in those other areas. We'd like the cow to eat less, to control those costs going in, to fit the environment and manage that whole system. We'd like them to reproduce better, uh, more efficiently, and we'd like them to stay in the herd longer if we could. I think what What's funny about all that is when, when you go to a typical bull sale, if I ask you to select for all that stuff, is there information in that catalog that tells you how reproduction's gonna go or cow costs gonna go or longevity's gonna go? 
the typical rancher, when they get a catalog, the first thing they look at is weaning weight. And the, if what we're after is more calves and more weight and better price and better feed cost and more longevity, if we're just selecting for that weaning weight, what do we think happens to the number of calves? That would say it would go down. In the long-term effect. The yeah. long-term effect. It's by down, right? Yeah. Yes. What about calf weight? If we select for that, it better go up. Better yeah. go up, right? Or something's not working, right? Now, I think I put a sideways arrow on that one because I think our environment's limited. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, most seed stock environments are a little different than most commercial environments. And so if, if that genetics can express itself under this maximum nutrition environment in the seed stock herd and you take it to a limited nutrition environment, which is what most commercial operations that we sell to are in for one reason or another, you're maybe not gonna get all of that expressed, right? What happens to calf price if weaning weight goes up? The price per pound goes down. And Price per pound goes down, right? It's the slide that, that we get on our, on our, so I put that arrow down slightly. Um, what about cow feed cost? If we're selecting for higher weaning weights and higher milk production, what happens to your cow feed cost? Cow cost will go up. Should go up, right? And longevity? Probably down. Probably down, right? So if we all agree that that's kind of the function, and we all agree that's the way we want it to go. And we all agree that that's probably the way it's going to go if we select for that. Is that a good strategy to improve cow-calf profitability by selecting for a higher weaning weight? If we're in it for a one-year show, you bet. Yeah, right? If we're terminal cross, great idea, right? If the bank needs a check next year and that's it. <laughs> but I think that's a big revelation to the industry. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've given this talk in Australia, New Zealand, in Europe, in South America. It's all the same. I mean, we've all been guilty of seeing these seed stock animals that grow like crazy. And we say, well, that's what I want. I want my cattle to grow like crazy and, and have heavy weights. And we go buy those genetics and this is what happens and we scratch our head. We, we know single trait selection doesn't work because single trait selection ignores everything else. Indexes are good because they look at multiple traits, but if you use an index that doesn't look at all the traits, you can have trouble, okay? So when we look at this cow-calf function, we have an index called Dollar Ranch that's part of the dollar profit. It looks at everything in this model. Okay, so the only thing that's going to hurt us on that if we chase Dollar Ranch too far is if there's something that drives profitability that we're not measuring. Okay, and you always have to be thinking about that. If you're selecting for one thing and there are seven things that drive profit, it doesn't work out well. That's what this showed, right? Now, if you're selecting for all these at the same time, it works out better, but you still have to always be asking yourself, did I leave something out? And if we only have to think about competing species and even in the cattle industry and the dairy model, the chicken guys, they made a lot of selection pressure. They actually made the chickens grow so fast their legs wouldn't support them. That wasn't in their model, right? Big oops, right? The swine guys, they made the, the, the pigs so lean that they had huge tenderness problems. Another big oops. The dairy guys, they had, a, they had a great index to raise milk production. No reproduction. Reproduction wasn't in it. I'm like, well, well, who didn't think that reproduction was important to profit? I don't know, but somehow they did that. But we know that these indexes work, and we know they're going to move you. Um, this is my, one of my favorite graphics. This is, shows um, chicken production from the 1950s compared to the 2001, and you see how much faster chickens grow today than they used to, but they made that selection without increasing dry matter intake. Basically, these chickens at the bottom ate the same per day as the chickens on the top. They actually reduced the feed conversion by a third. Okay. Chickens at the top converted 2.6 to 1. These chickens are at 1.8 to 1. Today, they're more like 1.3 to 1.5 to 1. 
you know, they've made this huge selection progress on that, not something we've done in cattle. So we know that the indexes work. That's why when we go to sell our bulls, instead of just having the basic EPDs that most people have, we run these three indexes. The dollar ranch index, profit from birth through weaning, includes the fertility and milk and growth and cow feed intake that we've been talking about today. And, and as we see it today, when we look out in the industry, it's the only index that's out there today that'll select for that profitability from birth through weaning, looking at all those factors we talked about. We've got another index dollar feeder, which is profit from weaning to harvest. There's lots of indexes in the industry that look like dollar feeders. Simmental has one called the terminal index. Angus has one called dollar beef. Dollar beef is a terminal index. It's looking at feed conversion and carcass value and carcass weight, and it's gonna make cattle grow faster and get bigger and heavier and leaner. And then we have the dollar profit where we put them together. It's really just both parts put together. It's the one number, as you said, Randy, that predicts your bottom line. If you're a customer and you're coming to us and you're going to sell the calves at weaning, you can, you can select just on Dollar Ranch, but your steers won't be as valuable. If you select just for Dollar Feeder, the cows don't work. Some of the old cattle, I mean, we, it, you know, those of us that study bloodlines, if we go back and say, here's a great maternal bull, here's a bull, the daughters lasted forever and we really liked them. When you look up their dollar ranch, they're all really high. They might have been born a long time ago. Their growth and carcass EPDs by modern standards look bad. None of us would go to a bull sale and buy them, but their daughters were great cows. Okay. Now we go to a bull sale and we buy this big growthy bull. He makes lousy cows. It wrecks our business. And I think because you have that data, I mean, those of us that have used it a lot, we start to say, wow, this is really helping us avoid those bulls that created those daughters that just didn't work at all for us. Building a better beef industry together is what Blockyard is all about. But how exactly is it doing that? Let's see how Blockyard is putting the production, health, and genomic information you need right at your fingertips. It all starts when calves are tagged, issued electronic identification, and a tissue sample is collected using a tissue sampling unit, or TSU. This sample provides the genomic information necessary to create a digital footprint. The process is as simple as creating a profile on Blockyard and uploading basic animal information. Once animals are enrolled and samples are processed, you'll see breed composition and available parentage results and be able to order replacement heifer and feeder cattle predictions. You can get predictions on individual animals or on a group of animals. Either way, this secure information stays with the animal or animals, creating a digital story as information is gathered and entered into Blockyard. It's a story that can help everyone along the way, from cow-calf producer to the stalker backgrounder to the feedlot producer. As more data is entered at each stage, Blockyard can help make it easy to make informed decisions throughout the supply chain by documenting each animal's unique story. With Blockyard, you can have the information you need most right at your fingertips. Unlock your value chain with Blockyard. Get started at Blockyard.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us honor our flag and country with the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars throw the peril of 
us fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rattling the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Good afternoon and Happy New Year from Superior Livestock Auction. Welcome to our monthly Holstein Steer Auction for January 4, 2023. Ten lots have been consigned for 1,590 head. We'd like to remind you that our first regular Superior Livestock Auction is tomorrow, 8 a.m. Central Time, right after the Superior Sunrise at 7.30 a.m. Central. 17,437 head will be offered that make up 159 lots. Also, mark it down now, January 18 through 20, our annual bell ringer auction in Oklahoma City. 1,168 lots have been cataloged for this three-day event for an offering of over 139,000 head. Now let's begin today's Holstein Steer Auction with lot number N100. N100 by SD Feeders at Syracuse, Kansas. 130 Holstein Steers with a base weight of 350 at Syracuse, Kansas. They go May 1 to June 1. On that day of delivery, we're going to weigh them on the truck with a 3% shrink. One load gate cut, and the buyer of the A lot has the option on the B and C lot. They're on the right slide, BQA certified, NHTC approved. And ladies and gentlemen, here's world champion livestock auctioneer, Charlie Cummins. Thank you so much, Clyde Whittle, and welcome each and every one of you right here ringside. Got a well of a good lineup for you. First uh, Wednesday of the month, our Holstein special land. Here we go there. Now, 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 get an option on three lots now. Get an option on three of them. And 190. Got the option on the B and C lot. 
Takes one lot. Offer the B lot option on the C. Yeah, two Got the option on the sea lot. He takes them both. Takes them both. Let's go on to lot number N101. N101. Still working for the SD feeders. These are at Demet, Texas. 130 Holstein steers with a base weight of 350. Very uneven in size. Like to go with them May 1 through June 1. On the Superior Ride Slide, BQA certified, NHTC approved. Buyer of the A lot has the option on the B lot. And here, no, 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 Got the option on the wheel lot. Takes them all. Takes them all. Let's go to N102. Still working for SD Feeders at Demet, Texas. Change your head count to 130 Holstein steers at 350. Going June 1, July 1 on the right slide. B lot will also head count changed to 130 Holstein steers. And buyer the A lot has the option on the B lot. Get an option here and get two lots together. He gets the option right here ringside. How many would you like? <clears throat> Eight here. Takes one. 
I sell the bee lot. We'll sell the bee lot. Two hundred and sixty more of mine. Two hundred and five, six on them. Here, two hundred and five. Seven and another bit of eight. Another bit of pardon me. Seven and another bit of nine. Another bit of ten. 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 Another bit of ten.
And it takes them both. And thank you, A.B. Ranch at Stephenville, Texas. Our next live will, will be on our first regular Superior Livestock Auction tomorrow, 8 a.m. Central, right after the Superior Sunrise at 7.30 a.m. Central. 17,437 head will be offered. That makes up 159 lots. And mark it down now, January 18 to 20, our annual bell ringer auction in Oklahoma City. 1,168 lots have been cataloged for this three-day event for an offering of over 100. 139,000 hit. Ladies and gentlemen, join us then tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Central, when buyers and sellers from border to border and coast to coast get together to market their cattle the superior way.